The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Let's go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, David Hellman, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. It is Friday, October 29th, 2021, season 17, episode number 50. Welcome to the latest edition of The Break Live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. Got Nick in here and Amber in here. Dave will be joining us momentarily. Right now he's having a, a conversation with Coach McCarthy. So okay. we'll see what... <laughs> we'll it see sound what, like he's going to the principal's room. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what, what comes of that. We'll see if he actually sticks around after that. Uh, but we'll, we'll get some, some you know download what? from him. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I haven't had a chance to be present in one of those walk-offs. Mm-hmm. How different is he from Garrett and like some of the things that he would say off the well, record those, type of stuff those guys are good i mean garrett was good in the walk-off yeah, yeah he just garrett showed y'all a lot more in the walk-off yeah. than he showed the media or the general public yeah. during McCarthy, the media session mccarthy yeah. does that too yeah um you were there for the first he did a little dinner yeah. lunch something with the media yeah. when they first when he first got here right yeah he's, and i know you came to me and you were like it, it kind of cool yeah you? he yeah he, he's just a dude yeah you know but but uh you know it's all calculated it has to be when you're doing these press conferences and you get asked them like you did today 27 different ways is that right. playing <laughs> and he answered you know, he's pretty patient though I, i've seen yeah. some coaches that get impatient with that kind of stuff it seems like he kind of he'll throw a little dagger every once in a while but for the yeah. most part he just kind of keeps answering the question even if he has to do it multiple times right yep Let's talk uh, real quick, Nick. Can you give me a 50? It's episode number 50. Milestone. You got one? Hmm. Let's just let's just go with Sean. Sean. Sean Lee. Sean Lee. Yeah. I mean, there's some others. D.D. Lewis, I think, wore 50. Mm-hmm. I mean, we didn't get Sean Lee on our show, but he, he was on the show the Would other day. Would have been nice, yeah. 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 I saw that. I was like, you freaking kidding me? <laughs> That's like literally the only player that has ever made me nervous. Really? Yeah. He made you nervous? Yes. Why? I don't know. I just, I, I have so much respect for him, like, uh-huh. to another level that it's just, like, it was always intimidating to talk to him. So, I don't know. He was the only one, though. But Alonzo he, Spellman was the only one that made Nick nervous. <laughs> <laughs> he made him a little nervous, so. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was kind of a scary guy. He uh, made players nervous, right, let's be honest right, with you. Right. <laughs> well, there's some stories about Alonzo yeah, Spellman. Yeah, I know. What, what number did he wear? 90. We'll save that until episode 90 because I'm yeah. sure there will be a lot of good ones you can tell yeah. us. Yeah, about, about the time that the equipment guys came in to, and he was in pregame warm-ups and he had his jersey on backwards. <laughs> and they're trying to tell – I mean, it just said Spellman right across his chest and they're like, what's going on? And they were like, who's going to tell him? Yeah, it ain't going to be me. Yeah, <laughs> He's yeah. going to roll out there with yeah. Spellman on his chest. Wow. Yeah. All right. But, um, but, but Sean Lee, you know, the thing is is that – it's it, it's kind of sad. He could have been one of the greatest players that the Cowboys have ever had, and he still was. It's just that, you know, the injuries, and he knows that he's the first one to say it. But I mean, it, it sucks because he had really did have some bad luck. Yeah. He could have been one of the greatest defensive players that they've had here. And you skipped over forty nine yesterday. Yeah, it's because there's hardly anyone that's ever worn it ever. I mean, like when I was here. Yeah. They had a tight end named uh, J.J. Huggins. He was the first player to ever wear it. Was he? So 49 is not a number that you wear. What number? I mentioned Lusaka's name the other day. What number? Because for some reason I thought I wanted to say he wore 49. No, I think we did him. the other. We did him like 30. Lusaka plays 39. 39. He was in the 30s? 39, yeah. Oh, okay. 49. 49 and 50. And 50, Sean Lee. All right, we got a lot of storylines we're going to do. We like to, to do this on Fridays. We try to take a big picture storyline approach to what are the things that, that we're talking about heading into the games, the things that on Monday we'll be talking about as either helping the Cowboys win or being the reason why the Cowboys lose. Um, so I wanted to go through some of these storylines, and I think there's no storyline, obviously, this week that's bigger than Dak Prescott and whether he will be able to play. Um, so let's start first with that. Um, how did Dak respond first, Nick? What, what have you heard as far as how he's responded to increased work that he got yesterday uh, when he showed up this morning? 
Well, I, I mean, he's he said he was going to continue to push it, and, and that's that's the, the one thing that we've seen here this week is that he's going to continue to do that. Um, and and I think that you know what he said yesterday is that it, I felt better every day, um, and which is that's a huge deal that, because I mean when you push it you push it like that you think you're going to have some setbacks. So it sounds like it's continued to ramp up in the in the right way, but. I think they were starting to kind of hear, I don't know if it's whispers or whatever, that there's a there's a chance that he's not going to play this game. Well, they were saying that today he showed up yeah. four. Yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't go- sound good. No, though. it doesn't sound good. I mean, it, it, it's going to be. I mean, but but he he said he said yesterday that he was doing. You know, everything was good. He was moving. You know, in, in the right direction. But I mean, you're going to be sore, but. It just de- depends on how much they're going to bring it back and how much they're going to say like, all right, today you're not you, you're you're not going to do as much. Friday's a little different day because they don't practice as much. Right. So I mean, obviously soreness. It, the question is, is he sore or is it like the is there pain from mm-hmm. that injury? Um, which I think are two completely different sure. things. If you've kind of been a little inactive and just been rehabbing, and then you go out for a workout and you try to push it, of course your body's going to be a, li- a little bit sore trying to get back acclimated. But that's the part that I don't know that they necessarily clarified in like that press conference this morning. It being Friday, the, the the game is two days away. And it being Friday, and just by using the – and again, sore, you said, you know, you can be sore and – it, there's a bunch of different levels to it, but the fact that that word has even been mentioned at all gives me a lot of concern. And to and me personally, at this point, and I hate to say it because I don't want to see a backup in there. I don't want to see Cooper Rush or anybody else in there. But at the same time, I feel like I'd rather rest him because there are still lots of other games to play. So I don't, I don't know how you guys are feeling about it at this point. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've said it before. I would have rested him. You know, I mean, it's just it's it's an it's an injury that that I think can it can be worse if you if you don't get it one hundred percent knocked out. And yeah, Michael Gallup's injury is different than you know Dak. I, okay, I get it, but Michael Gallup missed what six six weeks, so. And then we're, we're talking about him, Dak missing one, because he probably wasn't going to play the, you know, if they didn't have the bye week, he probably wasn't going to play that one. Mm-hmm. But still. Well, if we're talking about it now, then definitely he wouldn't have played that one, right? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. wasn't going to play. And now, now we're sitting at two weeks, and it's, I think it's 50 50. Which you know? that also is what I think worries me a little bit about all this is um, you, you listen to Dak and everybody else that was talking immediately following the New England game, and it was like, ah, he's fine. Oh, he's fine. Don't worry about it. He's fine. And go through the bye week, and then we get to this week, and it's like, well, you know, maybe maybe we want to check and make sure that this isn't going to be something that's longer term. So I start to think if he misses this game, I don't think it's necessary. I, I won't assume it's just one game. I will look at it and say, okay, well, maybe this is, if you have to kind of wait and see how this goes, Waiting and seeing how it goes could extend beyond just one game. Yeah. It could be two games. It could be three games, whatever. And that's why when everyone says, well, you know, you got a, a longer season to to worry about, well, I'm like, well, do we know that this is only going to be one game? If we know it's only going to be one game, great. If it's going to be a longer period of time anyway, like that's when you start affecting the rest of your season. Because, yeah, yeah you got a lead right now in the NFC East, but it doesn't take much to, to let that dwindle, right? Yeah, you haven't faced the – probably the best team in the in the, the division in Washington. So I mean you still gotta play them twice. All it takes is losing to them twice and then that, that changes the whole thing. So no I but but the thing about it is I think he could probably miss this game and it would probably just be one game. He could play this game though somewhat sore. You could miss a you could miss a lot more afterwards. What gives you hope or what gives you when you say you, you feel like it would only be one game, what gives you reason to believe it would just be one game? I think because we're sitting here on Friday and it's he's going to be questionable probably to play. So I think you give me another eight days, seven, eight, you know, ten, ten days from here, I feel like he could probably play. You know what I mean? If it's close here, I would think nothing but rest and – he should be fine, barring a huge setback. But I don't think he'll have a, a setback. They're they're not going to let that happen. Okay. 
Well, today I was sitting in bed early this morning, mm -hmm. and I just took a breath, and I pulled my neck. And it's <laughs> been hurting pretty bad. <laughs> my point is, what makes me wonder, though, because reoccurring or like injuries like that like we've said before you can be fine and whatever and, and then all of a sudden just a little pull just makes it worse again and, and then you're hurting now so my point is it makes me wonder how long like is a period of time how, how much is enough for you to absolutely be 100 percent on the clear not worrying about it but again this is the nature of football this is what they go through this is what they do and you can't just bubble wrap anyone yeah. <laughs> so you gotta play at some point but it does give me pause and in, into thinking okay this is one of those things that is not just uh, a bone healing type of stuff it's just it, it, anything could happen it's all right worse. let's go ahead and take our first break when we come back uh, i want to ask you guys a little bit more about cooper rush and whether you think the cowboys uh, have a good shot of winning or even a shot of winning uh with cooper rush at quarterback we'll talk about that when we come right back this is dallascowboys.com radio before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his unbending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him. It projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. Stetson hats are still American-made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at stetson.com slash cowboys. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day. Where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks. Free shipping. Honey, big news. Gary, are you okay? Oh, I'm not Gary anymore. I'm Jackie Flash. What? See, I want the latest smartphone, but the best deals are only for new customers. So to get a new customer deal, I changed my name to Jackie Flash. Okay, but the best smartphone deals at AT&T are for everyone, new and existing customers. That's huge. Then guess who's getting a deal? Is it Jackie Flash? Jackie Flash. It's not complicated. At AT&T, our best smartphone deals are for everyone. Restrictions apply. Visit att.com for details. Back to the break. Bring some Cowboys game day energy from the Dallas Cowboys Rhythm and Blue Dancers or Drumline to your next event for appearance and performance details. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash DCRB. Welcome back to the second segment of the Break Live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the start. We're now joined by David Hellman after he had his uh, it wasn't a one -on -one, probably a one -on 20 with yeah. uh, Mike McCarthy. But uh, what, did, what did Mike have to say? Did he give us anything good? Uh, just, uh, well, I mean, obviously, I heard what y'all were talking about when I came in, and fun's probably not the right word, so I'll say, this is just a really unique circumstance where, um, what do we talk about all the time, where we're like, what does he do on Wednesday, what does he do on Thursday, and by Friday morning, you usually have a pretty good feel one way or the other. Mm -hmm. I don't think they do. Um, I think this is going to go right up to tomorrow, and Nick, Behind the curtain, we should probably maybe get some things ready one way or the other because I bet we'll be on some runways somewhere. Are we going to write two stories and just have each might, one of them ready? It and... might not be a bad idea. I really <laughs> I think this is a rare circumstance where they don't know what's going to happen with Dak. But you and say they won't know until tomorrow. I do. Th I think they're going to make a decision tomorrow one way or the other. So you, you think by the time we get on the plane, they're going to have an you're, answer? You're saying... I mean, I'm not saying that they're going to put out a press release, but inside the organization, I think they're going to know if he plays by tomorrow when they leave to go to Minnesota. I think so. So you're saying you don't think they'll take him? No. If they... I just, no, I just think. He can walk. He can be there. Nah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, like I don't think we'll know anything tomorrow. Tomorrow, Saturday. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be. Oh no, no. I, and I think the thing is, I probably I agree with you. They may not let us know, 
But I think they – what Dave is saying, he thinks they will know. They I will make a decision. I 100% think they will know. But eh, you might be right, but I don't know. Decisions like that, you know, MVP caliber quarterback playing or not playing, I mean, that that seems like something that will get out. That, that seems Filter like out, yeah. something that will leak somewhere to someone, whether it's us, whether it's – Todd Archer with ESPN, whether so it's, it's the Dallas Morning News. It's brought us. be pregame <laughs> yeah. on Sunday, pregame. There's, He's out there stretching his hips. I would be shocked if we make it even to like that when far. we're getting dressed to go to the yeah, game. It's a night game. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's I gonna. think I it maybe maybe you're right. Maybe it won't come out tomorrow, but my favorite my favorite game is watch Schefter and Rappaport do their Sunday yeah. night news dumps or Saturday so, night news yeah. dumps. If you're still awake at like 1 a.m. on Saturday night, just go take a look at their Twitter pages because they've been saving up nuggets all week and they just start bombarding the Internet with their news. And, yeah, that late Saturday night, early Sunday morning, I just – there's no way we get to game anywhere near game time without this being out there. Yeah. My only thing to that would be if they're going to actually put him on the field and just and he's like truly a game time decision. Like he truly is a get on the cords, see how how are you feeling today? Like cuz cuz yes, you know, today, tomorrow, none of that really matters until how are you feeling then. So I I wonder if it if it really will be a true game time decision. But let me ask you this, is it really with this injury, is it one of those things where you're more concerned about the after effects than you are about how you feel in the moment, right? That's where I'm, I'm wondering, like, that's where, to me, it probably isn't a game-time decision because, you know, he could feel great that night. It's more about, hey, do we think it's healed well, enough to where he doing? can't— Well, but they, I think I mean, they're what, trying to— what, what have we been doing all week, then? I think they're trying to figure Gallup out— Gallup didn't do that. I'm sorry, but Gallup didn't do that in week two, week three. I, I get it, but the way they've talked about this— is they're trying to make sure that this is not something that he can re-injure in a significant way to make him miss future weeks. And yeah. so my thought is it's not necessarily about how he feels in the moment as much as other things that they look at to diagnose. And again, if, the medical trainers would know what if those that's things true, are. If that's true, then they already do know. You or know. they'll know by tomorrow, right? Yeah. I mean, you got to keep... they do know. I mean, they might. I don't get the sense that they do. And, yeah. and you got to... like. I'm still adapting to this. Like Mike McCarthy runs his week differently than Jason Garrett did. I think in the Jason Garrett regime, mm -hmm. they would know because Thursday's the all encompassing day and Friday's. This is like, it's certainly not a day off. I'm not trying to frame it that way, but it's a region day. Like yeah. this is the day where you get off the field and you get right. They technically practice tomorrow. It's yeah. more of they a. They kind of ramp back up a yeah, little bit. It's tomorrow. more of a walkthrough, but like they get on the field and do football stuff on Saturday before they leave, which Jason Garrett never. I mean, they did walkthroughs, but it wasn't yeah. like that. So Saturday is much more important for this regime than it was for the last one. And so. I, th I think they will leave it till tomorrow, one way or the other. So that all being said, let's assume for a second that Dak Prescott cannot play. What's your level of confidence that Cooper Rush in what will be his first start in the NFL? He's only had three uh, pass attempts and only one pass completion for two yards. What's your belief that he can actually lead this team to a win in Minnesota on Sunday night? Well, are we picking games yet? Are we, this is about the time. No, 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 no. I'm just saying because because when we pick the games. I don't want to, we're not going to qualify. We're just going to say, here's what I think is going to happen as far as win loss, which will have to encompass in some, yeah. in your mind, who you think is going to be the quarterback. Okay. So I'm just asking about what your faith is in Cooper Rush in this situation. Yeah. That's why it's kind of hard for, for me to, to, to go there because my answer was not going to be different regardless of who the quarterback is. Mm. Um, but I, wow. I, yeah. That, it, I'll just say it right now. Well, you told you told me I already know what it it's is. It's an L. I mean, I I, I pick in a loss. They, they're gonna. I think they're gonna lose Sunday night, and that doesn't matter if Dak plays or Cooper Rush plays. I'm I was gonna pick a loss here, so it might be. What is happening? <laughs> Why are we? What is going on with no, you I, and me this year? I don't know. I just feel like I just feel like <laughs> you feel that, the same way. I well, well I, you told me that too. Well, I I've had I have I've had a feeling all week. I will say if you could tell me right now. That there's a 100 percent chance that Dak will play and look like Dak, I would pick a win. Yeah, but eh, it's way too big of an if right now. And then you factor in the part where he might. They're gonna have if even if he plays, they're gonna have to change the game plan. Like they will call it differently than if he was fully healthy. So without Cooper, so with Cooper Rush, you guys are saying there's n right. like, you don't well, have that's, any. That's belief. why I want to be fair to to him because I was 
I don't I don't see a, them coming away with a win anyway. So I certainly don't think so. Why is that though? Right? I mean, this is a team that you're. I mean, I know that Minnesota presents some unique challenges, but they're three and three. They're not unbeatable. No, and you got a Dallas not. team that is playing extremely well. So what makes you? Why, why were you so like sold on the fact that this is going to be an L for them? I just because they've been playing with fire, and usually when you do, you get burned. I mean, like they've had three road games this year. They've all come down to the last field goal of the game. They've won two of them. But, I mean, I just feel like this is probably a situation where coming off a bye, they'll, like, I see them not winning this game. This is a tough place to play. Just more of a gut feel for you. Just yeah. like, you just kind of feel. Well, and, that's kind of what Dave is saying. Well, I, guess. Last I, night, I mean, like, you know, the yeah. Cardinals, the, the, it, but. You're going to lose. I mean, you have a loss at some point You know, waiting for you. I make most of my decisions just like using the law of averages. This is an insanely hard, even league. Uh, the VAT, like 26 of the 32 teams are within a touchdown of each other on any given day. It's one of the hardest environments to play in the league. I think they're better than their record indicates they are. They pushed Cincinnati and Arizona to the brink and lost those games. That's two of their three. And they, the other guys get paid too. It's real. It's as simple as that. And and you, it's not. It's rare. Even unless you're the Belichick Brady Patriots, it's rare rare to win more than like five games in a row. Yeah. Like you, that gets broken. They're up just eventually. on an amazing streak. That is just the the law of averages says they're gonna lose here. Yeah. I yeah. mean, Nick is perfectly right. Everybody's like. <laughs> Good luck, Aaron Rodgers. How are you going to win this with none of your receivers going on the road against the only undefeated team? Oh, they won. Yeah. They won because it's the NFL, NFL, and that's what happens. As soon as you're convinced of something, it will flip on you. Yeah. No doubt about it. Well, screw the law of average. There we go. (laughs) Screw the law. There we go. Thank you, Amber. Thank you. I would have picked the Cowboys to win. Definitely not picking them with this Dak situation. Um, I don't feel comfortable. Even if he plays, I'm still kind of iffy. I don't think he would be able to be himself 100%. But, um, you know, what they have a quarterback, backup quarterback, I'm sorry. It's, it's just it's not working for me. So we, ha- we haven't actually answered your question. I, I don't want to dog Cooper Rush. And the Cowboys' run game is powerful enough. Their line is good enough. And Minnesota's run defense is not a great run defense. I can see a path to victory. I, I can see it. Cooper makes – you, you got to make three to five great throws. Your receivers can help you with that. The line's got to control the game. You got to pound the rock. It would have to be like 180 or more rushing yards type of night. I see it. And then, and then whatever you get from the defense, some takeaways would be nice. Um, it would just it would be hard for me to even hope for that, let alone expect it. He's thrown three passes in his career in the regular season. They were all in garbage time of blowouts. Um, and Minnesota's a good team. Uh, Daniil Hunter, Everson Griffin looks like himself again. Dalvin Tomlinson. I mean, you can go down the list of their defense. And then, obviously, the Minnesota's offense is much more at full capacity with all their guys available to them. I just – I can see it, but I – You have your contacts in? Yeah, Why? Because uh, I keep saying I see things. I keep seeing things. Yeah. See. <laughs> I was like, you're seeing stuff I don't oh, see. Oh, oh. <laughs> if I didn't have my contacts in, I wouldn't be able to see anything. So, <laughs> All right, let's take our final break. Let's come back. we got a couple more storylines I want to hit before we end the show. We'll be right back. This is DallasCowboys.com radio. Hi, I'm Clint Tillerson with United Ag and Turf. Before you can park yourself in front of the game, park yourself in a John Deere and power through your chores. Our Land Run package is a 1025R, 25 horsepower tractor with a loader, rotary cutter, and a box blade for $229 a month. And the price you see is the price you'll pay. No surprises. So don't miss another kickoff. Visit unitedagandturf.com. Offer ends February 1st, 2021. Restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Now let's get to work. Honey, big news. Gary, are you okay? Oh, I'm not Gary anymore. I'm Jackie Flash. What? See, I want the latest smartphone, but the best deals are only for new customers. So to get a new customer deal, I changed my name to Jackie Flash. Okay, but the best smartphone deals at AT AT&T are for everyone, new and existing customers. That's huge. Then guess who's getting a deal? Is it Jackie Flash? Jackie Flash. It's not complicated. At AT AT&T, our best smartphone deals are for everyone. Restrictions apply. Visit att.com for details. New Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. You deserve it. I do deserve that. You deserve decadent flavor without sugar. And a day at the beach without sand getting everywhere. 
and a relaxing bath that your children don't interrupt. I deserve all that? It's really just a visual metaphor for Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. Everything you want, nothing you don't. A visual metaphor on the radio. I do deserve that. Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. The zero you deserve is finally here. Before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his unbending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him. It projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. Stetson hats are still American-made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at stetson.com slash cowboys. Back to the break. Invite Rowdy to your next event from watch parties to birthday parties, corporate events to special deliveries and more. Rowdy brings games, entertainment, and photo opportunities to all occasions. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash Rowdy to book your appearance today. Rowdy does stuff for money. What? What? When did that become the tagline? What are we doing? I just I just read it. That's on the tagline. No, but no. I just that's what <laughs> I just heard it. Where's the lie? <laughs> we all do stuff for money. Right? I don't want to touch this. Switch I don't it off either. because I cannot control myself sometimes. Yeah, so no, off, yeah, you be I'm, quiet I'm, over there. You I'm, just, I'm trying you, to keep my mouth shut. You just be quiet over there. All right, uh, we're more, back. Eat Final some more candy so you can't say anything <laughs> right. inappropriate. Live from the SWBC <laughs> Morgan Studios at the Star. Uh, the other big, uh, I guess, storyline around this game is the offensive line. You got Lyle Collins returning, uh, but you don't know whether he's playing. You don't know where he's going to be playing. Here's my question for you guys. If you had to going into this game, um, and, and you can factor in if you think Dak's going to play or not, what do you think is the optimal offensive line lineup uh, for this week? I'm, I, I, you know what? I don't feel bad about picking the loss here. You don't know who the hell the quarterback is going to be. You don't know who the left guard is going to be. You don't know who the right. Well, you do. Going to be. They do. I think they know the offensive line. They're, you can't convince me they don't know what they're going to do with the offensive line. Well, they're not picking my gut feeling for me. I'm picking it, so I, uh, <laughs> I don't. Point. That's I don't, fair. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I'm. This is. I don't think it'll change this week. Yeah, I you don't. You, don't, you think know. it's the exact same I, as it's been? I think it'll be the same five we've seen since Lyle got suspended. Right decision. Yeah, right now I think I think I think Connor. Is getting dogged, uh, not unfairly. He he was yeah. he had a rough night against New England, but that was really the lone outlier. But I do, I mean, Lyell's playing guard to spur him. They like, yeah, they, that is the that's the weakness on the line right now. And I think Lyell's taking reps over there to foster competition. I think it'll be the same, but if he doesn't pick it up, I think Lyell will be the left guard next week or maybe even at some point in this game if Connor struggles. I think he'll play his best game. Connor. Ooh, yeah. Connor, I have a feeling he will. Just, you know, that's how this stuff that's that's why you do this stuff. Yeah. Like ideally, I mean I know Lyle Collins wants to play, but the coaching staff w- wants to light a fire under him and have him pissed off and play great. Yeah, that's what I think. And so, I, I think Terrence Steele is the starter and the right tackle. I think that they just don't want to mess with that. I don't think it's even a question. Mm-mm. So let me throw this option at you guys. Looking at the fact that if Dak doesn't play, we talked about the running game. We talked about the fact that uh, Minnesota doesn't have a great run defense. Do you think that there is an advantage to a guy like Lyle Collins at left guard because he's more powerful? You probably can get a little more out of your running game, certainly in short yardage. Uh, you would think with him and Tyron there together, you could really, really get some push, uh, which is something they haven't been able to get. Do you think this is actually a week where it makes more sense, maybe more so than other weeks, for them to maybe make that change? Mm. Especially maybe, I like where you're going, especially if Cooper Rush has to play, right. because you're, you're to some degree you're going to be telegraphing your game plan. You just you need to take the ball out of the quarterback's hands. And then it's bully ball, so you got to be able to line up and just say, we're going to run the ball, and you can't stop us. If Cooper Rush plays, I see the validity of that. I, I don't know. I Like I said, I lean toward thinking Connor is going to start this game regardless. But but we'll see. Dak, Dak said he had his best practice as a pro yesterday. Lyle. Con- Oh, Lyle. Did. Lyle. Wow. Mm. We, I mean, at what position? I had a good question. <laughs> Probably both, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're all, and they're also tight, like yeah, they're homies. Cool. Yeah. So, um, I don't, Still, I don't know. 
I, I would assume yeah. so. Yeah, whatever. I mean, he did. It wasn't like he went out and said, "This is what Dak's been saying." Like uh-huh. it just that's his I boy. Like I yeah, know. actually, his Dak boy. said he was asked about the testimony, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm basically I said what I said. Maybe I'd prefer for that not to have been made public, but yeah. I'm trying to help my buddy out." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I the thing is, is you know, Zach Martin doesn't want to play. Like he made it clear, he didn't want to play right tackle. He's a right guard. He didn't really want to play right tackle. So it obviously is a big difference in in the position. I do think the bully ball, yeah, I think Lyle Collins can be that kind of guy, but he hasn't done it in five or six years. I just don't think that he will be ready to go in and just unseat Connor Williams right now. He hasn't done it forever. He hasn't practiced, and now all of a sudden he's going to come in and now he's going to practice guard. I mean, I, I, and that's, I think that's something that maybe over time will... You know. I agree. And that's, I mean, again, again, it's the same thing with Dak's calf. Like, if they were, if they were two and, what's their record, five and one? If they were three and three and then kind of feel it, or even two and four, and you can kind of feel it slipping away, Dak's playing, no questions yeah, no asked. Yeah. If the offensive line was a freaking mess and nobody could stay healthy, Lyle's playing, no questions asked. But... They're remarkably healthy. They have an insane amount of healthy depth on their offensive line right now. So, no rush. What I mean, what? if Connor continues to struggle, you maybe plug him in over there. But having the best swing tackle in football ain't a bad thing right now. And not to bring a dark cloud in here, but That's you, my can, job. What are you, you doing? can't ever rule out the possibility of Tyron getting banged up a little bit or something bothering him in the middle of the game and he has to go out for a little bit. So at that point, I mean, that is you s- plug him in. That is such a good point. I mean, the Patriots game feels like a lifetime ago, but Tyron missed yeah. some time. He had to go back to the locker room. And, it, and we've said a million times since the year started, like that's always – going to be in the back of your mind with Tyron probably for the rest of his career. So, so let's assume for a second something happened to Tyron in game. Do you think they, and now this is assuming he's even active, do you think they would slide in Seki in there? Because you're talking about the other two guys who really haven't had any time working at left tackle this year, I don't think, unless they've done it in practice where we couldn't see it. You think they would just slide in Seki in there in that kind of situation? I'm not talking about a prolonged injury over weeks. I'm saying just in game this week. Do you think Ty Seki is the best option at that point? Somebody's going to have to be inactive, right? Yeah, I so, think. Well, especially your quarterbacks. I mean, yeah, I mean they're going to ha- they're probably going to have three quarterbacks unless they are just so confident in Dak being out that so they you sit think, him down. You think if they go with Cooper Rush, you think they'd still have Dak active? Is that what you're saying? Um, no, probably not. Right. So you still got to have seen, just two, right? I've seen that happen before. It's not good. Yeah. No, you got to you got to everybody cuz then everybody's kind of no. like Hey man, like we're down. If you just no, 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 yeah, you can't do that. You can't, <laughs> if you decide he's not going to play, you got to make him an actor. Right? Because yeah, the Minnesota takes a ten nothing lead, and all of a sudden, four everybody on the sidelines thinking like, can we get four in? <laughs> yeah, he's dressed. Yeah, and I, I, I hear what you're saying. If if they can find a way to get him active, I bet they would do that. But me personally, as a not football coach, I'd rather just throw LC out there. Which, yeah. I'm like I know you haven't done it, but you're it out. really good. I'd rather you play left tackle. <laughs> yeah. All right, we appreciate you guys joining us. We'll be back on Monday. I think we've picked our game yeah, that, at this point. I think you're picking a win. I, I am picking a win. I know you yeah, are. I am picking. Now, regardless. Yes, because I actually the way I look at it is the question I asked you guys earlier. I think that that the Cowboys are good enough running the ball that this could be a game where similar to what they did last night, what what the Packers did last night. You can slow this game down. You can run the ball and you can run the ball effectively, regardless of who's at quarterback. And I think that can be the way that the Cowboys win this game. And I, I still am like, this is a 3-3 and team versus a 5-1 and team. I think Dallas is a better team. I've spent too much time with Nick over the year. I mean, well, for, first of all, no, well, first of all, we're starting to agree a lot more often than we ever have. And second of all, I don't like it, I don't like it either. <laughs> we should be teaming up over here. But I just, I also, I just, I can imagine Nick saying this because I know he has. Like, the more we talk about this and, like, so three of us are picking them to lose – Dak's gonna play, and he's gonna play his ass off, and it's gonna be like the the calf game. You know, he's gonna throw. <laughs> but I also for like know Nick. I also know Nick. Game. Nick is very much the kind of person that if things are going well for too long, he starts getting like, whoa, 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 something's gonna happen yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Like he, and so I see when he said that, I was like, this is like this is vintage Nick. Like five weeks of winning, no, everything about this is telling Nick and this yeah. is gonna be a loss. It's like red yeah. lights flashing. I've only it? seen yeah. one winning streak. 
longer than a you know they won 10 and 16 yeah. i think they won six and 14 i probably was picking losses there at about, <laughs> right, right. I mean, yeah five you get to a certain point it's like yeah it's just hey, they wrong. went into pittsburgh right. five or yeah. six in a row is at the most that you could realistically hope for in the nfl i mean i know it's possible to win a lot more than that but it doesn't happen very often see what the cowboys have done to well, Nick. they've given him ptsd like, and everybody can't. listening is <laughs> nodding along like <laughs> right, yep like you start right. looking around corners for boogeyman right but, I, but I, if he plays or not, I've said it all week, I don't think he'll be 100%. Yeah. I think he'll be kind of hobbling a little bit. And, uh, you know, I just I think this is probably going to be a, a loss. All right. Well, we will see. We'll be there Sunday night. If it's not, it's because he plays and balls, which I'm A-OK being wrong if that's what we get to watch. But I, I, what I do like about this is we've gotten a chance to see them in different scenarios and see them – play well in different types of scenarios okay so let's see what they can do in a scenario like this where you don't have your quarterback if he doesn't play and uh, and can you find a way to win in that kind of situation can you find a way to make the offense move in that kind of situation where you know it, it's going to require them to be really good in the, in the run game so it'll be a good opportunity for us to just see this team and see them in different scenarios and uh, and we'll see what happens Sunday night till then for Nick Eatman Dave Hellman Amber Garcia I am Derek Eagleton this has been The Break, live on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!